six warning signs of insulin resistance not to miss. The skin, it is a window to what is going on internally. Today, we are gonna be talking about key skin findings that are clues to insulin resistance. First of all, what is insulin resistance? Insulin is a hormone made by your pancreas. It's responsible for controlling your blood glucose, your blood sugar. Normally, after you eat a meal and you have an elevation in blood glucose, insulin is released, and that allows for that blood glucose to be shuttled where it needs to go into storage forms for later use. Insulin resistance is basically defined as subnormal glucose responses to a given amount of insulin. The natural progression of insulin resistance is first to have hyperinsulinemia, high insulin levels after a meal. With time, that then progresses to hyperinsulinemia in the fasting state. In the face of insulin resistance, over time, the failure to maintain normal blood glucose leads to hyperglycemia, high blood sugar, and diabetes. If you can intervene on insulin resistance early, make lifestyle changes, modify your behaviors, get on medications where needed, it really can change your life. Diabetes has so many complications that if you could do something early on in the process, trust me, you're gonna wanna do it. There are a few rare genetic conditions where patients maybe have a problem with certain receptors in their body that the downstream consequence of that is insulin resistance. But in the vast, vast majority of cases, insulin resistance is secondary to something else. And in the majority of those cases, it's secondary to obesity. About 70 to 80% of cases of insulin resistance are related to obesity. Weight loss, exercise, and healthy diet can can actually reverse insulin resistance. That's why recognizing these signs can really be a game changer for many people. But insulin resistance can also develop as a result of excess of certain hormones. That might be hormones that your body produces or hormones that you are taking. For example, glucocorticoids like prednisone or growth hormone that you might be taking. The reason it's important to look at your skin for clues of insulin resistance is that in the face of hyperinsulinemia, your skin is actually going to see that. There are receptors in your skin for insulin. And when insulin is very high, it's going to bind to those receptors and evoke different skin changes. But some of the skin changes that we're going to talk about are not directly related to hyperinsulinemia. They are indirectly related to it because they are actually caused by elevated androgens. Did you know that hyperinsulinemia, having high levels of insulin, as in the case of insulin resistance, actually can lead to an increase in free testosterone, an androgen hormone. In women, this comes about because the elevated insulin causes our ovaries to make more androgens. And because many people who develop insulin resistance have obesity, having an increased volume of adipose tissue, fat, that adipose tissue actually produces Produces androgen hormones and leads to an elevation in testosterone. So what are some of the skin changes associated with insulin resistance? Probably the one you're most familiar with, acanthosis nigricans. This appears as this thickened, velvety, raised, textured skin, often in the skin folds. You can see it under the arms, the sides of the neck. It can happen on the face, the backs of the hands. It can happen in a lot of places. Some people mistake this as hyperpigmentation, but it's not. It's kind of a type of skin thickening. A high amount of insulin binds to receptors on the keratinocytes, they proliferate, and that's what explains acanthosis nigricans. This can be one of the earliest warning signs. The acanthosis nigricans itself, will it stay like that forever? In many cases, once you intervene on the insulin resistance, it can regress, it can improve. Importantly, it will not worsen once the insulin resistance is controlled. There are certain topicals that can help improve the appearance and lighten things up a bit, although again, it's not hyperpigmentation, it is skin thickening. Topical retinoids can improve the appearance, as can topical ammonium lactate or urea. Unfortunately, because this happens in the skin folds, these ingredients can end up being irritating, say for example, under the arms. Check out my video on acanthosis nigricans because I go into a lot more detail as to the different types of treatment. Today's video is more focused on the warning signs themselves rather than going into the nuances 
purposes of treating each warning sign. Number two is another one I have a lot of videos on and something I get a lot of questions about. Acrocordons. Acrocordons is a medical name for skin tags, soft skin colored little growths that we describe often as being pedunculated, which is in medical terminology for on a stalk. So you have this kind of tear shaped growth that's very soft, moves around often on the sides of the neck, under the arms, again, in the skin folds, maybe aggravated and brought out more so, not just by the insulin levels that are driving the proliferation, but also those frictional forces. A lot of patients develop numerous skin tags on the sides of the neck. They try and wear a necklace. It'll get caught up. It can become inflamed, irritated. They can really be uncomfortable to, to cope with for a lot of patients. They want them removed. Don't fall for those over-the-counter skin tag removal things. There are some things that look like a skin tag might actually be something else. You don't want to just go lopping things off, but suffice it to say, insulin resistance absolutely can lead to multiple skin tags. Now, if you have one or two skin tags here and there, don't freak out and assume that you have insulin resistance. They can happen spontaneously, especially in areas under a lot of friction. The other less specific skin finding, because a lot of people have this, they have it as it relates to dry skin, they have it as it relates to atopic dermatitis. It's a condition called keratosis pilaris. This is basically rough and bumpy skin or chicken skin, some people like to call it. Little dry rough bumps around the hair follicle. Basically the skin cells around the hair follicle, they don't seem to shed efficiently. They get dry, they get stuck together and you get these little rough bumps. The skin around these little bumps can become inflamed. You can get a background of redness. Some people describe that as strawberry skin. Again, if you have this, don't assume you have insulin resistance because it's not specific, but there is an association with insulin resistance and keratosis pilaris. So maybe some of these other findings are present as well. It's new for you. It's not something you had ever before. It could be a warning sign of insulin resistance. Now, keratosis pilaris often happens on the face. It can happen really anywhere where you have hair, which is pretty much your entire body, except your palms and your soles. Often happens on the upper arms, the thighs, and moisturizers with urea, ammonium lactate, lactic acid, glycolic acid, or salicylic acid, all can help soften and exfoliate those dry, rough bumps. That is the kind of thing that you do have to keep using in order to control the condition. But in the case of the insulin resistance, if that, that truly is underlying the keratosis pilaris for you, well, once that is addressed, the skin barrier and the dry skin condition may improve. The next three findings that I'm gonna go over or don't directly relate to having high insulin, but indirectly relate to that because they are mostly related to having elevated androgens. And that is acne. New worsening acne can be a warning sign of insulin resistance because elevation in androgen leads to more oil production. So it might start out with, gosh, my skin is like really oily and greasy. That could be the earliest warning sign all the way to frank cystic breakouts. Acne is related to that little bacteria that lives down in the pore. It thrives off of the oils that our skin makes. So anything that increases oil, namely through androgen signaling, will uh, you know, potentially trigger acne. So a lot of patients who deal with insulin resistance do develop, you know, one might describe as hormonal acne. In those cases, the hormones are the major driving factor. Hormones drive acne in everyone who has acne, but they're like the main player in acne in patients with insulin resistance, secondary to the elevation in androgens, which again comes about in women because the insulin leads the ovaries to produce more androgens. And in patients who have obesity, the excess adipose tissue produces testosterone. The other two, are maybe not in your mind skin specific, but we'll say dermatologic. Remember dermatologists, we deal with the skin, the nails, the hair, the mucous membranes. So a lot of people forget about hair growth and scalp as being related to skin. But one condition I have many videos about, maybe you're sensing a theme here, but can be actually a lesser known warning sign of insulin resistance by virtue of androgen excess is androgenetic alopecia. This is 
is known commonly as pattern hair loss. It happens in men and it happens in women. Uh, looks a little bit different in men compared to women. Men tend to first experience this as a receding hairline, whereas women start to first experience this as a widening of the central part, although there can be some overlap there as well with women experiencing receding hairline as well. The name is androgenetic alopecia. The genetic as it, as it sounds. There is a genetic tendency towards this, but the andro part of that underscores the genetic tendency tends to be a sensitivity of the hair follicles to androgen hormones such that the hair turns into a little baby vellus hair prematurely, and that is what leads to thinning and hair loss and balding. So anything, whether you are genetically susceptible or not, anything that leads to an increase in androgen levels can really push your hair follicles over the edge to miniaturize and for you to develop, well, pattern hair loss. Of course, in my videos on how to treat pattern hair loss, a theme is topical. Minoxidil is a go-to standard treatment. I also have videos on low-level laser therapy. I have videos all about oral minoxidil. And I also have videos about other hormone-specific therapies to treat androgenetic alopecia, like finasteride, dutasteride, spironolactone in women. But if you have insulin resistance, you've got to address that. The final one is actually hirsutism. Now hirsutism refers to hair growth in a male pattern. We're not talking about your scalp this time, we're talking about anywhere else. So where is it that men grow hair that women really don't? The chin, the upper lip, the beard area, sides of the face, your neck, your chest, around the areola of the breasts, and on the lower abdomen, and sometimes the, the thighs as well. Unwanted hair growth. Isn't that just the thing? The way our hair follicles are, um, they'll respond to something in the opposite ways in which we want. We'll lose hair up here and we'll gain hair other places. Now that being said, a lot of women do have some terminal hair growth on their face that is kind of more related to like their genetics. It also can happen with the normal hormonal changes around menopause, but we're talking like frank hair growth in these areas. That is definitely a warning sign. And you know, there are a variety of approaches to getting rid of that hair. There's laser hair removal, there's electrolysis, and as a side note, I do have a video comparing laser hair removal to electrolysis. Which one is best? Which one should you choose? So definitely check that out because anytime I talk about hirsutism, I'll inevitably get some questions. Hey, can you talk about electrolysis? Paralysis, like, is that actually worth it? Check out that video because I go over the pros and cons there. Anyway, you also have a variety of, you know, hormonal medications that can help to mitigate the the hirsutism and, you know, sort of remove some of that androgen influence on the hair follicles. But again, when it is a warning sign of insulin resistance, and oftentimes you're gonna have other signs. It's not like it's gonna be an isolated chin hair and you have none of these other things. Usually you're gonna have acanthosis nigricans. Taken together, if you have these warning signs, definitely you need to see a healthcare provider and take care of your hormonal health. In other words, you need to address the insulin resistance, take lifestyle measures, work with your doctor, with a dietitian, um, with whatever resources you have. Unfortunately, resources are scarce and not available to everyone. You can do something, you have to, you have to. If you develop insulin resistance, it goes unchecked, you develop diabetes, let me tell you, it is going to take you down a path that really will shorten your life, period, point blank. And if you can intervene on that, it will totally revolutionize your health. You can take back your life quite literally. Knowing these warning signs and identifying them can really be a wake up call for a lot of people for changing some of their lifestyle habits. Now that being said, as I said, when I was talking about who gets insulin resistance, it's not always something that you can necessarily change through lifestyle factors. Like I said, some people are born with genetic conditions for which they 
have you know underlying problems where this is going to be a thing for them regardless of their weight. But some people take medications, have to take medications that can potentially put them at risk for this. And it's up to them and their doctor to, to be monitoring for these things and adjusting accordingly. All right, guys, so those are the warning signs of insulin resistance. Speaking of diabetes, um, I have a video on how diabetes impacts your skin. I'm actually gonna put that video on the insulate. You definitely wanna watch it because we go over even more findings that extend above and beyond what you can develop with just insulin resistance, how diabetes can really take over your skin via its effects on the vascular system, the nervous system, the skin barrier, you name it. You're gonna wanna check that video out because it's very eye-opening. All right, y'all, if you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.